Hello everyone. So now we are on to problem number four. By the way, check out the link in the, in the description. And we're supposed to solve this differential equations for three different kinds of functions for f. So firstly, before we look at any of the cases, let's just state the homogeneous solution for y. So that means that if f, f of x was equal to zero, uh, then what would the solution be? The solution would obviously be some constant times e to the power of minus x. So now we got that done, we can look at the first case. The first case is if f of x is equal to x squared. What do we do then? Well, of course, you just use some kind of polynomial with degree 2. So, okay, we uh, make an ansatz, make a guess, an assumption that y is equal to uh, x squared. That we can state because this is the only one containing an x squared. And then plus some constant a times x plus some constant b. So that would then mean that uh, y prime plus y is equal to x squared plus, and uh, then you have x times a plus, again, when you, y prime uh, is therefore equal to 2x plus a. So therefore you would have, okay, so you have x and x there, so we have a plus 2. And then for constants, you just have b and a. So plus a plus b. And you want this to be equal to x squared for all x. What does that mean? Well, okay, so we have that a plus 2 is supposed to be equal to 0, meaning that a is equal to minus 2. And therefore a plus b is supposed to be equal to 0, so just b is therefore equal to, sorry, b is therefore equal to 2. So there we have it. Okay, so we know that the particular solution for when x, uh, f of x is equal to x squared is that uh, y is equal to our particular solution is that y is equal to, okay, so we have x squared minus 2x plus 2. So then we're done. Okay, so that was the first case. And now for the second case. Give me one second. And of course, now I obviously I forgot. So that was the particular solution. And obviously for the complete solution, you have to add the homogeneous and the particular one. Sorry about that. So now let's move on to the next case. That was when f of x was equal to sine x. So what do we do here? Okay, so we know that the derivative of sine x is cos x. So we can't just put sine x in there. So maybe we guess some constant times sine x plus some constant times cos x. That's a good guess. We'll go with that. Okay, so we guess that y is equal to a times sine x plus b times uh, cos x, meaning that y prime is equal to, okay, so cos, sine becomes cos and cos becomes minus sine. So we get minus b times sine x plus a times cosine of x. And now what is then y prime plus y? That is obviously a minus b times sine x and then plus uh, a plus b times cos x. And this is supposed to be equal to sine of x for all x's. And what does this mean? Okay, now I'm changing color. Um, 
if, if we want this to be true for, for all x, that means that uh, this thing here has to be equal to 1, and this thing here has to be equal to 0. Okay, so we have that a plus b is equal to 0, and a minus b is equal to 1. That obviously just means that a is equal to 1 half, and b is equal to negative 1 half. Can you see? Yeah, I think you can see. So that, that would mean that our particular solution is equal to 1 half sine x minus 1 half cos x. And our sol total solution then would be our homogeneous solution plus our particular solution. So just this plus that. So yes, that was the second part of question number four. And now let's move on to the last one. One second. And now the final one. Now we just have, instead of sine x, we have sine squared of x. Now what do we do? Okay, so we do kind of same, the same thing as before. We note that, okay, if y is equal to sine squared of x, what is y prime? Okay, that would be 2 times sine of x times the inner derivative, which is then cosine x. So we have, we would have that, we have 2 sine x times cosine x. And what is this? This is just sine of 2x. So the derivative of sine squared is sine of 2x. And then, so therefore if we just were to guess sine squared, then it obviously wouldn't work. And we know that the derivative of sine of 2x is 2 cosine of 2x. And the derivative of that is then, it goes back to sine, right? So an appropriate guess would maybe be that y is equal to sine squared. sine squared x plus some constant a times sine 2x plus some constant b times cosine of 2x. Okay, so let's write down the prime. y prime is equal to sine of 2x plus 2a cosine x cosine 2x minus 2b sinus of 2x. So now, okay, y prime plus y, what is that equal to? That is equal to sine squared of x plus, okay, so now, now we want to gather all the signs. Okay, so we have, here we have a sign, there we have sine, and there we have sine. Okay, so we have a plus 1 minus 2b. So 1 plus a minus 2b of sine of 2x. And then we want to gather all the cosine. There we have, okay, so we have b plus 2a. cosine 2x, oh my god, fit perfectly. And we want this thing to be equal to sine of 2x for all x, meaning that they cancel out, and therefore we want that, so we want a minus 2b plus 1 to be equal to 0, meaning that this thing here is supposed to be equal to minus 1, and then we want 2a plus b to be equal to 0. So therefore we add two of these by Gauss elimination. We add two of these to that one and then we get that 5a is equal to minus 1 meaning that a is equal to 
negative 1 over 5. And we know that b is equal to negative 2 times a. So therefore, b is equal to 2 over 5, which makes sense. Yes, it very much does. And so, yeah. Okay, so here we have our constants. So therefore, we know that I don't have any space left. Okay, I'll write over here. So we have that y, our particular solution, is equal to sine squared of x minus one fifth of sine of two x plus two fifths of cosine of two x. So that is our particular solution and then obviously you just add the homogeneous one and yes so that was everything for problem four on my fucking final exam and uh, yeah check out the link in the description so yes that was everything so thank you so much for watching and now on to problem number five